First here, breaking news out of the Republican National Convention, where former President Donald Trump has chosen his vice presidential candidate. We're looking live here now at the convention floor in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Trump naming Ohio Senator J.D. Vance his running mate this afternoon after months of speculation and a lot of jockeying by people who wanted that job. Vance is 39. According to his website, he served as a Marine in the Iraq War, is a graduate of Ohio State University and Yale Law School. We have team coverage from the Republican National Convention and also the scene of Trump's attempted assassination in Pennsylvania, also the fallout here in New York. Now the news of Mr. Trump's VP choice broke soon after the start of the RNC. And Trump is calling Vance a fighter for the people. CBS 2's Natalie Brand live tonight at the convention floor there in Milwaukee. Natalie. Hi, Maurice. Christine, a short time ago, we saw Ohio Senator J.D. Vance on the convention floor. He did not speak, but he rather mingled with some of the delegates down there, took selfies, made the rounds as he's enjoying this moment, newly named uh, VP pick for former President Donald Trump. You can hear the chants behind me shouting, J.D., J.D., as the nomination uh, ceremony will now now officially begin. And notably, the former president, when announcing this pick on social media, he made a point of mentioning that Vance will now be focused on reaching out to workers and farmers in key battleground states, including Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. This convention will come to order. The Republican National Convention kicked off with news that Ohio Senator J.D. Vance will be former President Trump's running mate. What does he bring to the ticket? Uh, he is smart and he can articulate the Make America Great agenda uh, as well as anybody. The importance of the position was underscored this weekend when Trump survived an assassination attempt. They tried to assassinate him and he's still coming back fighting. So I think the Republicans are behind him 150 percent now. This afternoon, delegates made Trump's presidential nomination official with the roll call of states. Jerry, the great state of Iowa proudly cast all of its 40 votes for President Donald J. Trump. The former president now in Milwaukee says he rewrote his convention speech in light of the shooting at his Pennsylvania rally. The message that President Trump is coming out of this is very simple. We have to unite America. We have to unite the country. The Trump campaign says the focus of Monday's program will be the economy. Sean O'Brien, the head of the Teamsters Union, who endorsed President Biden in 2020, is tonight's keynote speaker. This VP pick. Senator Vance is just 39 years old. As you know, he's known for his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, uh, about growing up in poverty in his home state of Ohio. Ohio's lieutenant governor, who's actually speaking on stage right now, introducing him and his background, uh, officially nominating he him here at the convention, told me in an interview a short time ago that he believes Vance will use, draw upon his background uh, growing up uh, in the circumstances that he did to really reach out to working class people and voters for the rest of the campaign season. Natalie, a closer look at the relationship between the former president and the senator. They hadn't always seen eye to eye. In fact, Vance was once critical of Trump. That's exactly right. In 2016, Vance was actually harshly critical of the of uh, Trump during his first presidential campaign, kind of uh, a proclaimed never Trump guy. But that changed over the years, especially uh, when Vance ran for Senate back in 2022 and realized that he needed uh, supporters of the former president to to bolster his chances at winning the election, which as 
you know, uh, he did. So fast forward to 2024, he's now considered one of Trump's most vocal defenders in Congress, but certainly a huge change from just a few years ago. Natalie Brown reporting for us from the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Natalie, thank you. We are learning tonight more about the would-be assassin who shot Trump, including when he bought dozens of rounds of ammunition. And there are also more questions about security at the rally. CBS2 investigative reporter Masa Saidi joins us now live from Butler, Pennsylvania with the latest. Masa. Christine Morris, some breaking news tonight. We have just learned that the FBI has gained access to the shooter's phone, but unfortunately, we are no closer to knowing the motive. They weren't able to get much information from that. To give you an idea of where I'm standing, of course, Mr. Trump was right under that flag when the shots were fired. And tonight, U.S. security officials are facing tough questions about how a gunman was able to get within shooting distance of the former president. I'm a, a Trump supporter, and, and this affected me greatly. Tonight, supporters of former President Trump emotional at the site of the campaign rally shooting. FBI agents also in Butler, Pennsylvania, as they search for a motive. We've learned on the day of the attempted assassination, the shooter, identified by authorities as Thomas Matthew Crooks, purchased 50 rounds of ammo. Before shots were fired, some rally goers say they spotted crooks and alerted police. Michael Sloop is the sheriff of Butler County. All I know is the officer had both hands up on the roof to get up onto the roof. Sloop says local police saw crooks on top of the building. One officer hoisted the other up. The shooter was in position. Never made it because the shooter had turned towards the officer and rightfully and smartly the officer let go. To the best of my knowledge, it was not the responsibility of the Butler County ESU team to secure that building. And a phone call with CBS2, the Butler County District Attorney said five days before the rally, local law enforcement were on scene with Secret Service. And on that morning, they arrived at 8 a.m. My team had four sniper teams and four quick response teams assisting. The Secret Service was running it. They, they were in charge of the whole thing. On Tuesday, the Secret Service will brief the House Oversight Committee. Director Kimberly Cheadle said in a statement Monday that the agency will participate fully in an independent review of security. And they're working to, quote, understand what happened, how it happened, and how we can prevent an incident like this from ever taking place again. I've spent the last 32 years trying to educate students on the importance of democracy. As high school teacher Rick Meisner stared at the flag, he was overcome. No matter what happens in this country through wars, depressions, bad situations like this, the flag always gives us hope that we'll have a better tomorrow. And as you can see, law enforcement is still blocking the entrance of the field. This is very much an active investigation. The couple you just heard from, they heard about the shooting while they were vacationing in New York City. They're on their way back to Iowa, and guys, they just had to come here. They wanted to see this for themselves. Masa, you mentioned the 50 rounds of ammo that was bought on the day of the shooting. What have you learned about the rifle the gunman used? Sources tell CBS it was purchased legally by the shooter's father well before the attack. Masa Saidi reporting for us in Butler, Pennsylvania tonight. Masa, thanks. Tonight, Congress is taking steps to investigate the security breach that allowed the gunman to get that close to former President Trump. This has increased security measures are also being taken in Washington, D.C., also here in New York. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer joins us with that part of the story. Marsha. Well, Christine and Maurice, the shock of what happened to President Trump prompted congressional members to meet with the House Sergeant at Arms about stepped up protections at the Capitol. But that's not all. All. The head of the House Homeland Security Committee met with Secret Service officials ahead of what I'm told will be a full-scale investigation starting next week. Americans demand answers, and we have some very serious questions, and we are filled 
uh, with all the right emotions, uh, from uh, 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 from just being shocked and astounded to to anger and fear. Congressman Mark Molinaro talking about plans by the House Homeland Security Committee and the House Oversight Committee to launch a full-scale investigation into what they call an assassination attempt on former President Trump at a Pennsylvania rally. Talks are already ongoing with Secret Service officials, he said, adding that there are several components to the probe. How the government was able to get within shooting distance of the former president. What protocols need to be updated to ensure the safety of all the presidential candidates, including Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and what steps should be taken to prevent a similar incident in the future. Americans have every right to engage in political discourse without fear of, uh, of violence, and that, too, will be part of the investigation. This is Governor Hochul also ordered new security measures here in New York. This is a deplorable act, as is any act of political violence. Our democracy was built on a foundation of vigorous debate and the peaceful transfer of power. The governor ordered the state intelligence center to monitor social media for threats of violence. The state police counterintelligence unit to conduct outreach to local law enforcement to check for suspicious activity and for state police and the Joint Terrorism Task Force to coordinate their efforts with federal agencies. We should aspire to be a people of words, not bullets. Such violent acts actually make us weaker, pulling apart our communities and undermining our unity in the face of the world. Now the governor says she will not let the events in Pennsylvania change her behavior because to do that would, quote, let the cowards win. There's also speculation tonight about whether the president will order a leadership change within the Secret Service. Guys. Okay, Marcia, thank you. Former President Trump did score a major legal victory today as the criminal case charging him with mishandling classified documents was thrown out. CBS 2's Jessica Moore takes a look at why this Trump-appointed judge made this ruling. The bombshell ruling came down this morning as District Judge Aileen Cannon granted the former president's motion to dismiss the classified documents case against him, calling it unconstitutional. And Donald Trump wasted no time praising her decision. The now-tossed indictment charges Trump with 37 counts, including mishandling classified documents and obstructing justice. In her ruling, Judge Cannon wrote that special counsel Jack Smith does not have the constitutional power to prosecute this case, as he was not politically appointed or confirmed by Congress. She also says there's a problem with how his position was funded. She didn't get to that because she said, well, we're going to dismiss this with respect to the appointments clause. In November 2022, Attorney General General Merrick Garland appointed Smith to investigate allegations that Trump took classified documents with him after he left the White House and then obstructed governmental efforts to retrieve those documents from his Mar-a-Lago home. Today's decision is stunning. Presidential historian Tim Naftali says national archivists noticed the classified documents were missing and only sought help from the Justice Department after Trump denied having the materials. Prosecutors say they have an audio recording of Trump admitting he knew he had the classified documents and had shown them to people without security clearance. Today's decision was very unfortunate for the security of our presidential records. It was his choice not to tell the American people about where their documents were. It was a choice made by the former president. Just we have to keep that in mind. It's not a, yeah. wasn't a choice made by bureaucrats in Washington. Legal experts say the ruling will likely be immediately appealed given its unprecedented nature and because it would also impact Trump's trial in D.C. over January 6th and the interference in the 2020 election. Jack Smith is also prosecuting that case. Jessica Moore, CBS 2 News. And from this court case to the attempted assassination and its impact on the RNC, CBS2 has you covered. We'll bring you every development here on the air and streaming on CBS News New York.